What's up, gang? Welcome back to another episode of Weld.com. We're going to continue our series today on our groove welds with the gas metal arc welding process. We already did the 1G open root weld. Now we're going to move on to 2G. All right, just like any good welding video should have, we should do a little bit of a run over of the machine and the equipment that we're using. So we've got the Cyclone 212 here. We pop this open, we've got our filler metal already loaded up inside. Now we've got 70S6 MIG wire, 035 size. We've got this particular unit fed in from the bottom side because that's how this wire drive likes it. We've got our tensioner set uh, to the appropriate toitness so that this wire goes through without any type of wire restriction. One other thing, when you're putting a spool on, be sure to have this in a certain tightness too. If it's too tight, it won't wanna pull this wire very well and you'll have a lot of popping and sputtering. Now, if it's too loose, you're gonna see every time you stop that trigger, this thing is gonna to start to like bird nest. It's start to kind of come unwound. So make sure you have this at the appropriate tightness, same as your, your uh, tensioner here on these drive rollers. We've got the right size rollers. They're nice U-grooved, smooth. 035 size, we're all set, wires run through that gun, out the other end, we've got our wire feed jog on the front of this machine, we sent it right through without any problems, not using any gas or any, keeping things hot. So now that we got that set, let's go over and look at our plate and what we're gonna be working with today as far as prep and fit. We're only gonna need a few tools to complete this weld today. We've got our grinder right here, it's a four and a half inch Dewalt grinder. We started off by prepping these plates. Prep and fit are two thirds of the battle. One third of that is just welding. So we've got to get the right prep, which I hit it with the flap wheel. Got the back side of the weld done, got the front side. Anywhere a weld is gonna to be touching or squirting through or whatever it may be, I want nice shiny metal, right? We've got about a 35 degree bevel right here, 30 to 35 degrees, and we've got a little bit of a land. Okay, this root face on here is about 3 30 seconds of an inch. Okay, now this is going to vary depending on, you know, the welder or the gap that you're going to want to run, but a good land holds some heat for you. So now we can run about an eighth inch gap with this 332nd land and have some success with it. Now this varies again, depending on the welder and the kind of process and all that goes into it. But for this short circuit process, open root mig, we're going to be running a 1 8 gap and a 332nd land today. Now I like to apply that land with the actual rock, a, uh, a disc, a rock disc, because this is going to actually put a nice sharp, like you can really see this land, it's nice and flat, whereas the flap wheel, because it's kind of smoothed off, it doesn't really put a nice crisp flat spot on there. So I always put my land on with the grinding disc. I might end up using a quarter inch wheel or a cutoff wheel today in order to open up any gaps or do some feathering on the root pass. And then we might use this to grind down our root and then our wire wheel, of course, to clean in between passes. Now that we got our kind of our tools set up, we have a clamp, we have our MIG pliers that we're gonna utilize. Let's get this thing fit up but before we can kind of tack it together. We need to go look at that machine. All right, we've got the machine turned on. We've got our voltage settings on the left and then our inches per minute on the right here. Now, when I go to put this root in, it's a, got an open gap, it's an open space. So I'm not gonna be using this much voltage I'll probably start off somewhere around 17. We want to match our inches per minute to kind of complement that. So I'm going to say about 180 uh, until we get a little bit spicier with these volts when we get moving into our fills and our caps. We've got our pre-flow. You know, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me to have much pre-flow. Post-flow, I'm not really worried about that either. Now, again, you can go about setting these. We'll just give them a little bit of something, something because it never, never really hurts. Inductance is like your crisp or soft setting for like a stick rod. Now, because we're doing an open route, I want to have more closer to 50, like a half and half, because I want it to be crisp, but I also want a nice puddle that's going to stick to it. We're probably going to turn this back up closer to 70 when we get into putting in the fills and stuff because there's no open route. Got our burn back set, no spot, no stitch, our 2T trigger ready, and then we've got our standard torch. Now, of course, whenever we're running our gas metal arc welding process, we want to make sure that we have our MIG gun plugged into the positive terminal and our ground, our work lead, put into the negative so that we're running DC positive. 
If we're running DC negative, we have these flip flopped or we have this ground moved over here or inside the machine, we've got something changed. You're going to see some serious changes here uh, and you can almost break the plate over your leg whenever you put a root in. It's pretty, pretty crazy. All right, y'all, before we can get into anything further, we've got to talk PPE. We've got to keep ourselves covered and protected. The MIG process isn't too bad. It's pretty sparky though. Got a lot of buckshot, a lot of sparks coming off this process. So we like to have nice solid sleeves on. A uh, short sleeve shirt's just not going to cut it or a long sleeve shirt even uh, if it's not thick. You know, you might want to go ahead and step up to a welding shirt. Now, as far as welding gloves, I'm a big fan of these Cayman 1600s. This is what I wear pretty much for any type of process. You know, once you really get good at knowing where to keep your hands and not where to burn them, I love these because I can feel what I'm working with as I'm welding. They also have other flavors like these 1540s that are more of your MIG style gloves or a little bit more thicker. Uh, and they've got a couple bit more padding on them. And then we've got these big old dogs, these 15, 1520s right here. They, they'll handle some heat. So Cayman's got whatever flavor you want. So you give them a shout and they'll hook you right up. Of course, we've got our welding hood. We've got us a shade 10 lens in here, uh, ready to work. I got to put my welding cap on and then let's tack this plate together. All right, so when we're fitting these plates together, we want I like to tack them from the backside. I like to push them together, just make sure that whenever I prepped it, I prepped it right, and I didn't over grind these corners or under grind, over grind anywhere else. Everything's a nice, tight, even gap. Otherwise, I need to go back to the grinder and try things out. The other thing I've got here is just a little bent spacing rod, eighth of an inch. We're just gonna open this up, put it together, squeeze it, let that rod stay pinched in between. And then I go ahead and I go ahead and maybe just pull this out. It might be nice or smart to go ahead and put a clamp on it so it doesn't move. Uh, but I think this is going to be just fine. We could put a tack on her over here. All right, so I changed my mind, guys. I actually had to cut this tack out to refit this plate. I put this tack in. I Like I said, I kind of scooched that plate in. And I think that was going to actually prevent me from putting my root in. If this gap is too tight, I'm not going to be able to get the proper root in the root reinforcement that I need. Uh, the land on there is, is sizable. So we, we can have a bigger gap. This one eighth gap is going to be fine. Should have trusted my gut on the first time. We'll get this thing tacked up in a hurry and get this thing started. Make sure we're going to go ahead and leave this spacer in here so we know that it's an eight. Not to mention when you put this first tack in that spacing rod is going to it's going to warp a little like it's going to open up like this because this, the, this side got hot and then cold. So then it, see how that wire doesn't want to come out no more. And this has a little wiggle room. So we can get this out, no problem. It's not a big issue. This is the time to do it. And now we need to just double check our gap, maybe squeeze this side in a little bit before we go to tack it. And I had to turn my volts up to about 19 volts and 180 just so I could get some solid tacks on here. Now we're getting set up, guys. We, we turned our machine back down. Our volts are now back to 17 uh, volts and it's still 180 on that wire feed speed. We've got our plate tacked up. Now, as far as any 2G weld I'm making, and again, this goes for any 2G weld, I like it to be about chin height. If I can have it about chin height, that'll give me a nice resting place where I can see, but I can see over top of the gun. I don't like it to be way up here because then you're going to have to hold your arms up higher and all that good stuff. One other thing you should always try to do is practice that run, do the dry run. I don't like putting my elbow down. I don't like putting my elbow down on this piece because I'll start to move and then that elbow gets hung up. I like to put my arm, embrace it underneath whatever I'm using to prop on. That way my elbow stays kind of free and moving. So I use it as kind of a lean to, or maybe even my shoulder, but I keep that elbow free if I can at, at all times. All right, before we get rolling, I want to kind of talk about where this wire needs to be landing. The more we lean this gun back and we're staying on the top, the crown of our weld, or more on these bevel edges, the less reinforcement that we're going to get. The more we turn it in and stay to that leading edge, we can kind of even wiggle and walk our way through here, or we can kind of freehand it, like come off of it. But the more we point in, the more penetration you're going to get, and then to a point where you're going to be shooting wire out the back side of this plate. So we want to try to find that happy median. And if you notice that you are, you know, in one spot and you haven't moved, the puddle's not filling in, it's likely that you're filling in the backside and you're getting excess reinforcement. So you need to start leaning that back and going higher and trying to get off that spot or just stop, evaluate, 
change your settings, change your positioning, something. If it's not working, stop, try to fix it.